you head to the Expo Chamber um, for the signing of the MOUs in relation to the establishment of Jobs.ai. But before we kick off and before the Minister and I say a few words, perhaps I wonder if the PS or Mr Romney could just talk us through um, the, uh, what's going on today and how the, the work will be taken forward so that everyone here has got the same basis of understanding uh, because it's such an exciting project. It's uh, hear it from the experts first, if that's okay, and then we can add some thoughts and reflections afterwards. So could I ask one of you to, uh, to set out the project in a bit more detail than the press have already had? Right, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me first thank uh, Her Excellency the Governor for hosting the signing of both MOUs and for, to everyone for attending and particularly to the press for taking time to be here. Uh, this is a project that came out, came out of a conversation, as, as a matter of fact, one of the very first conversations I had with my new boss. Actually, she was not my new boss at that point in time. She was my boss while I was in education, but uh, when I moved to DYC, uh, one of the first conversations I had with her was concerning the public image and how DYC delivered to the public and how it relates, relates and interacts with the public. And she asked that I make it a priority to look for ways to actually improve how that is done. So the service delivery project came out of that conversation. We pitched the project to Her Excellency the Governor and her team here at Government House, and they agreed to provide initial funding of US 5000 uh, for consultancy services to kind of help to kind to help us develop a communication or public relations strategy as uh, so to how we interact, communicate, and what medium we use to communicate and interact with young people and the public at large. And one of the instructions that came up with that dialogue was that we tried to do something that was that could be used as a model not only for the Department of Youth and Culture but other government departments that should be looking at service delivery and how they interact with their various clientele. So this project got both uh, through those conversations. In addition to that, and, and this is rather interesting, uh, Mrs. Banks, Miss Banks, visited the department to pitch an idea sometime earlier in 2014 to us uh, that she was working on. Uh, I, sadly to say we weren't that much interested in that particular <coughs> idea. <coughs> no offense to Mrs. Ms. Banks, it was an excellent <laughs> idea. But in the conversation that ensued, uh, she also informed us of a desire that she had, or her intent, intent of her business, to actually pursue this project, while we at the same time was thinking about it. And we thought, here's an opportunity for government to partner with the private sector <coughs> uh, to accomplish a shared goal. Uh, so, through that conversation and many conversations that followed that one, uh, Tahira came on board with the department uh, to help us with the development of Jobs.ai. Now, Jobs.ai has been in the department's strategic plan since 2009, so it's something that the department contemplated for quite some time. And we were able, with all our ducks lined up in a row, with the assistance from the governor's office, uh, instructions from the PS and support from the PS, and with the, the potential partnership with um, Tahira Banks Live Communication, we are able to bring it to this point. The project has five distinct components. It's to develop a communication strategy, uh, public relations strategy, and also to look at how best we could use or utilize social media uh, to, to communicate with the public and deliver services to the public. It's also the development and creation of a department website page that uh, Dykes is currently working on, and we really appreciate the, the efforts that they're making in that regard. It's all, the third component is to develop public literature that can be distributed to the public in the form of brochures and pamphlets on department programs and initiatives and so forth that the public can rely on and, and, and use for information purposes, and the design and development of jobs.ai. That's the Th uh, third component, design and development of Jobs.ai. Now, what is Jobs.ai? And I'll let her here as well speak to this. It's a platform for businesses, organizations, and the government of Angola to list job vacancies. All right, currently job vacancies or job opportunities in Angola are listed on multiple sources, the media being here, whether through newspaper, on radio, and also on individual company websites. What this 
what jobs.ai does is that it centralizes the process and everyone can list in one location. Job seekers can then go there and uh, search for available jobs and match jobs with their qualifications and so forth, look at salary requirements and other skills, uh, skill requirements and, so, requirements and so forth. In addition to that, employers can list, uh, use the site to look at the profiles of potential employees and get a feel as to who's in the market and contact them directly. So it's not a situation where just the employees or the job seekers can contact employers. Employers themselves can be proactive if they know there are vacancies within their businesses and contact our, our potential employees. In addition to that, it will uh, give us an idea of amalgamate uh, uh, statistics in one area in terms of the number of available jobs, uh, the number of persons applying for them and where with, with the, with the applications are going. That type of statistics are actually, the site has the potential to, to do it in a way that, and this is, this is not my, my um, admission, but this was from the Labor Department, in a way that the Labor Department has been unable to do up to this point. So it's a, it, will, it will really improve how they operate as a, as a department as well. And it's important to note at this point, they are also a partner on the project. And I'll let Tehira speak more to this, but if you look at the images, the site is not just about jobs and job searches and, and applying for jobs. It goes a lot more because DYC do a lot of programming in, in, in terms of um, career, career choices, economic empowerment of young persons. Uh, so we are looking at a comprehensive approach. We're looking at things like scholarships, college opportunities, uh, listing those. So, and I'll let Tahira speak to the encompassing nature of that. I don't want to take that from her. Uh, what we're going to do when we launch the site on, on, on the 16th, February 16th, we'll commence some training for all HR personnel, personnel nationally, from the hotel sector, from government, from the private sector, law firms, to, to, to grocery stores, and anyone who's interested to come. We will train them and provide instruction to them on how to use the site, how they can utilize it for their, <coughs> for their purposes. And we are hoping that eventually they become partners as well and, and come on board. Now, the, the entities that have part, agreed to partner with us are as follows right now. The Labor Department, the Public Administration Department, uh, the Enwell Chamber of Commerce is under consideration with them. And we should have an answer for them from them shortly, but we don't foresee a problem with that. The Anguilla Hotel and Tourism Association is on board, and it's also under consideration by the Anguilla Tourism uh, Board. So we have a number of, of all the key players on board with the project that are required for the project to move forward in a meaningful way. And we really do appreciate all the assistance they're given. I'm going to ask the hero right now to speak to the encompassing nature of the site and uh, the, the services that we'll offer. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Um, just a couple things initially. Let me start by expressing my gratitude to Her Excellency the Governor for granting us this platform to present to the public the developments of this project. Um, the Minister for his attendance, and of course, um, Mr. Brent Romney, and all the others in attendance um, for his foresight in partnering with Life Communications on this project and his unwavering belief in my own company. I would also like to take the time to thank my mother, who's present today who has for the past 25 years facilitated my dreams and made me the greatest investment a parent can make in a child, her belief in my potential and commitment to supporting me and to more for them. Um, Father, thank you for teaching me by example that it's okay to think outside the box to be creative. <laughs> um, Gino for listening to, believing in, and assisting in all of my dreams. And of course, my brother Sil, whose legacy wakes me up every single day. And his tragic passing in 2013 and the pain I've come to associate with the lack of closure on that case drives me to be everything I can be, if only to ensure that he's never forgotten. I love you so. Uh, the vision. With Jobs at AI, we wanted to bridge the gap between the dreams of Ed Williams and their realities. We wanted to build a resource that provided step-by-step -step tools to enhance the lives of Ed Williams. Our goal was to create a platform that provided actionable opportunities for its users. What we created um, with Jobs at AI, what will launch on February the 16th, is a website 
and a social platform, and ultimately we will branch into a mobile app because that's one of the things my company develops. Our, our platform enables users to create profiles, to upload resumes, to interact with other users, to contact potential employers, and to identify meaningful ways to live out their dreams. For employers, from an employer perspective, they can post jobs. And what we wanted to do was simplify the process for finding the right employee. You don't have to go through a bunch of paperwork. You can go in there and enter the filters if you need an employee that is looking for that you, if you can only afford to pay $1,500 a month, you can search for employees that are looking to get $1,500 a month. You can search by a number of different fields. We wanted to list scholarship opportunities and information for getting into college because we know a lot of young people need a resource to further their dreams. We also wanted to provide information on work permits and important information from the Labor Department, Public Administration, the Chamber of Commerce, and the AHTA. We list all government procurements, which is something Mr. Rodney told me I thought I was very excited about because a lot of people, I think, in Anguilla pass up on the opportunities that the government has because they don't know they exist, and there are a lot of opportunities presented by the government. Um, we provide our entrepreneurs with information on starting and growing their businesses, and our crowdfunding add-on really creates a platform for entrepreneurs and anyone with a dream to fund that dream and make it a reality. I'm very excited about that add-on, in fact. How it will benefit Anguilla. With jobs.ai, we didn't just want it to benefit the users that interacted with the site. We wanted it to benefit Anguilla as a whole in four key ways, I think. We wanted to improve the overall efficiency of the job process with the hope that those improvements in efficiency would lead to improvements in the economy. We also wanted to give young people a sense of autonomy, control over their life. And with jobs.ai, our hope is that the next generation of Anguillians have a greater sense of belief in their innate potential and that, they, and that with this site, they see meaningful opportunities to make their dreams become a reality. Uh, for entrepreneurs, artists, folks like myself with grand plans, we want them to have a platform to express their ideas and provide them with the resources they need to turn those ideas into tangible real-life accomplishments, like right here today. Finally, jobs.ai was created to uplift our island and its people. Our hope is that it will improve the general well-being and sentiments about the economy and the opportunities available to Anglians on the island. Um, I won't go into too much detail about my company, only to say that I'm just very happy for the opportunity to partner on this project. Last year, we worked with the Anguilla government um, by way of the National Carnival Committee to develop the mobile app for the National Carnival. Um, we worked with the government of St. Gitts and the St. Gitts National Carnival Committee most recently to develop the app for the St. Gitts Nevis National Carnival. We develop websites, and what we are is a communications company. We market, we brand, we create advertising campaigns, web development, the list goes on. But most importantly, with my company, I wanted to create a company that didn't just wait for a new client, but that sought ways to partner and invest our financial and human resources with other organizations that share common goals. Jobs.ai is a testament to that company policy. We partnered with Mr. Romney and the DYC on Jobs.ai with a joint investment in a project we know will transform the way businesses interact with employees. Finally, I just want to express thanks to Mr. Romney, Mrs. Bradley, and the DYC for giving my company the opportunity to work together on this project. I can say I've learned so much from our brainstorming sessions over the past year. As young people, learning from adults is very important and we need to grow and respect the process and understand that fulfilling our potential is largely contingent on our willingness and our ability to listen and learn from those that have come before us and that understand the systems. We cannot improve on what we do not understand. That is an important concept. And I hope that more mature adults will follow the standards set by Mr. Romney and the DYC in utilizing the creativity of young people. Our progress into the future depends on the vision and innovative ideas of young believers just like myself. <laughs> well, let me just say good morning again. It's indeed a pretty difficult act coming after to hear. <laughs> What do you think I made you do it? Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I take this opportunity again to say how I'm a, I am to be seeing Tahir and Rome because I know we had the opportunity, you're rightly stated, to work on the summer festival uh, mobile app. 
and I thought that was a great um, experience as well. Um, what you did for Angola, and then later here, the um, initiative in St. Kitts um, from this company, which is uh, ours, it's local, and we ought to be proud, proud about it. So I want to first of all commend you and your company for the steps on which it is making. Um, it's a young company, but indeed you, you begin to branch, and that is an important thing in our region. As it relates to this, um, this morning's exercise, I want to say thanks to uh, the Governor for at least making it possible by the 5,000 US dollars to at least use as a seed fund to start this project. Um, you're quite right that within the government circles, a lot happens and um, the general public is not aware of the field, so what is really happening. And from the Department of Youth and Culture, there's a lot that um, has been happening there. Uh, Brent, his predecessors, I've worked extremely hard in terms of trying to turn around that department and really make it good and meaningful and to the benefit of our young people, to which the department is um, geared towards. And therefore, with the public awareness, I think it can only go a long way in helping um, to disseminate information um, which the department has and, and will continue to share. This program. I, I think again, with all the various um, you know objectives can only help in terms of pub public awareness. And you said you know job.ai, and that's just one component of it. But the list of um, different um, components to which we envision here, I think, will indeed help not just the Department of Youth and Culture, but will probably bring some awareness to some of the other departments within government the realization that we have to be able to communicate using different means, different methods, thinking outside of the box, being more creative, uh, reaching our people at different levels. This is, all, this is what it is. It's a different age now. And um, social media is, is really um, running away with it. And therefore, I totally endorse this, um, this exercise, this energy. Uh, the Brent and my peers are working extremely hard you know, on this. And they, they normally just buzz me at the end of, of everything to say it's done. Um, so I'm indeed happy to give my blessings and now that Brent and um, my peers has ensured that um, we have done the eggs, we've crossed the teeth, and we're ready to move forward. So the partnership with the other government agencies is, current, is critical because you need that information to feed into this and um, to make it really a workable, a workable document. And I would hope that. Um, as I said, other agencies within government will see the importance of this and seek to, to use this platform as well to help to disseminate information. So the government of Angola will do its part as well in collaboration with the um, governor's office to make this um, indeed possible reality and moving forward. And I want to thank um, Live Communication right, for your initiative and your foresight as well and a determination to, to stick to it, not just to say, well, this is another government bureaucracy that is um, wasting my time. But um, we recognize once you stick to it and we do what is right, that we can indeed reap the benefits. So I want to thank you again. I want to thank the media for, for being here to cover this, because this is a national um, event. And um, to say to all of us that we have something that we should look forward, eagerly look forward to, that will help to build in terms of our communication um, in, the, in, the, in government and also from the Department of Youth and Culture. With that said, we should thank you very much. Well, let me just add a few words at the end, although I think many um, important points have already been made. Uh, I think this is a really great example of how we can change and improve the way we deliver public services in Africa. And as the minister said, you know, the times are changing around us and we need to stay ahead of the curve and make sure we are delivering public services in a way that is accessible and reaches out to the people we're trying to serve uh, and does it in uh, as modern and low cost a way as possible. And so I too commend uh, the Department of Youth and Culture for the vision um, and the uh, strategy putting together such a good